three, two, one. Here we go! everyone and welcome back to 15 minutes of fame with dawn branch here is where we bring industry professionals into your home where they share their secrets of their success tonight's guest is one and only miss mm -hmm. ellie potts barrett welcome to the show hi dawn thank you so much for having me this is so amazing it's amazing thank you you are amazing. So audience, she's a dancer, a choreographer, a director, an educator, and so many other things that we're going to find out about. Um, before we do, I have to thank my sponsors. So, Ms. Barrett, get Twinkle Toes ah, Apparel, fabulous. Com in Atlanta, Georgia. They are a dance supply store. They have these wonderful shoes. Let me tell you, it's like walking on air. They have shirts, leotards, you name it. It's a small boutique. And they have these wonderful carbon pouches that you can place into your dance bag to eliminate the odors in your bag. Yeah, so that is twinkletoes.com. Thank you. Right. So back to the show. So <laughs> welcome to the show again. Where have yeah. you been? <laughs> I haven't seen you in forever. So <laughs> aside from those accolades, who is the woman? Who is Miss Ellie Potts Barrett? Boy, John, what a question. I'm so grateful, first of all, that you supplied me with some questions. So it's always nice to be prepared. So thank you so much for that. And of all the questions, that's the one that kind of kept me up at four in the morning. And I know it should be the easiest one, right? Because most people would say, well, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, and this. But I kept thinking, who am I anyway? Because of okay. the we're doing chorus line right now and you know i i think like everybody has their story everybody has their path that they've gone on in life and for myself it's kind of like therapy to know who i am i have to go back to when it all started quite honestly and i can probably answer a few questions in this in this question and that is um I have always been a dancer, musical theater person since I was born. It was never, that consciousness was never not there. Even as a little kid, I look at the very rare videos that my parents actually took of me because I had two sisters before me mm -hmm. and every, all, the, all the photos were them. If they came to me, <laughs> it was already, you know, there just weren't very, very many taken. But I always did this with my hands and kind of floated through space. I don't know, in my little snowsuit at like one year old. So um, anyway, I was born in New York and my mother took me to a show when I was three years old. And I remember, I remember to this day, Dawn, pulling on her sleeve saying, I want to do that. So I always wanted to be an actress. I mean, I didn't think dance ever. It was always, I just want to be an actress and I want to sing and I want to do everything else that goes with it. So I was always that kid who choreographed at like five years old, four years old. I always choreographed those garage shows. <laughs> I yes. me and my stuffed animals and my dogs and would charge my parents and my sisters in the neighborhood of Penny to come and see this show. So I don't know where that came from. It was just always there. Um, so anyway, when I was very young, when I was eight, um, my dad, for some reason, decided to move us to Winter Park, Florida, from New York. And in New York, Dawn, we had this amazing group of people and support systems and family that was amazing. So for him to want to change direction in his careers, whatever that was, I'm really not quite sure. Even at this age, it just goes through my mind and I have to let it pass because mm -hmm. I just can't get hung up in that. Mm -hmm. So he packed up the car and he packed us up and we all left for Winter Park and we left all of our relatives, huge Jewish family. Mm -hmm. 
And we came down here and I want to tell you that it was the worst thing that could have happened to certainly me, because mm. I do believe that things happen in our lives that can change who we are. And I think that was probably, as I look back on it now, so many years later, that was certainly one of those times. And um, I just immersed myself, Dawn, in theater. So I came here when I was eight and um, we lived in Winter Park for a number of years. It got a little better as we moved into Orlando. But as we were in Winter Park, I, really got immersed in theater. What do you do when you're eight? I mean, I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. My mother put me into dance classes. Um, she put me into theater classes at Rollins College, which I loved at the old Fred Stone Theater that I think, I don't even know if it's still there anymore. Um, and it was really immersive for me. And um, I got to do musicals and shows. And I don't, I don't think she put me in vocal class but she supplied what I needed at the time. So that, that to me is really kind of who I am because I come from um, kind of, I mean, it was, it was a terrible time when I moved here because we were up against so much anti-Semitism, I can't even tell you. And this was the 1960s. And it was a really trying time for me because I had so many issues in school with kids just not liking me, you know? So, and I thought, well, do I really wanna say that? But yeah, because that's really who and what I am. So now it has also taught me, Dawn, how never to treat people, you know? Excuse me, particularly my students. I can't even imagine saying a weird anything or mean thing to a student. I just can't imagine as a teacher. So anyway, there's that. So I never really planned on being a dancer. It was always a musical theater person. As I got older, I got more involved with community theater. I remember doing Meet Me in St. Louis and my shoe went flying in the audience. And for some reason, those things have always happened to me in my careers and my shows and my life. Um, I remember I ended up being, which is another story, in the circus and my shoe went flying into the audience. My beautiful new character shoe with the three inch heel went flying into the audience. And those <laughs> things always kind of happened. So anyway, but um, I don't really take myself very seriously. I do what I do because I love it. I'm yeah. grateful for people like you in my life. I'm grateful for my fellow artists and people that I get to work with and teamwork with. And um, it's all good right now. I'm busy and I'm happy and I'm just really loving life right now. It's really, really good. Oh, I'm so happy to hear about that little, that <laughs> first part of your journey. Oh, it, it at least I have an understanding of background. Um, you're always so kind. You always stop to speak. And I always wanted to say thank you for that. Um, I know we work together and we would pass each other this way, but you always took time. And I appreciated that. Well, Dawn, I always heard the most amazing things about you. And I, I remember speaking with parents somewhere, somewhere in Winter Park, and they were saying, oh, have you met Dawn Branch yet? And this was before I met you. And they said, you've got to meet her. She's fabulous. Oh, so I mean, it was- Thank you for that. Working with We you. have the same, um, what do I want to say? Language. Yeah. Dance yeah, yeah. language. Yes, we, we understand the, it's a vocabulary. Right. I wanted to talk about that because you said musical theater is what your, where your heart was. Yeah. Well, how it did it is. flip? And it still, it still is. is. It still is. So, yeah. how did dance become a center of pretty much of your career? Dawn, I don't even know. <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was always the kid who didn't like ballet class. I took my 1960s jazz class, yeah. you know, I, just loved, I loved it. And um, I took with the obscure teachers. I didn't take with the popular people um, mm -hmm. in Orlando anyway. And then I, in, in high school, I went to Edgewater High School, go Eagles. Mm -hmm. um, I got so involved in theater. I was involved in thespians and went and did the um, thespian conventions and choreographed the musicals and choreographing for some reason, Dawn was always just so much fun and just, it came really easy to me. I didn't really have to 
work so hard at it, as long as I gained a vocabulary, mm -hmm. I was okay with finding steps to the music because I always believed that the music, particularly in musical theater, tells you what to do. Oh, so wait, I let's stop there. This is okay. pretty much like a, a, a teaching platform. I have a lot of young children who watch the show and they want to learn as well as me. <laughs> I want to learn. So walk me through that. What in the music makes you say the step goes here? Oh, I see this step. What is the music telling you to do? Like, how does that work? It's almost being sentient to the music and being sensitive. And I mean, it just, it just comes to me. If there's no, um, well, let's see, step touch here. Um, and just putting on some music and listening to it, whether it's for modern or classical or it's Bach or it's something funky or it's something like afro celt sound system, there's a feel to the music, you know, that you feel, that mm -hmm. I feel, that it just, for me, it's just easy. And if somebody wants to go into choreography or be a choreographer for a career, I would say to that person, learn everything you can get a huge vocabulary. So when you are presented with either commercial work, or if you have to do something for your composition class in college, you know, you have the tools because you have the vocabulary. I really think it's all vocabulary. But then again, we have other wonderful things going on in the world like Gaga dance. Mm -hmm. And from that, you can, you know, yeah. just create even without music. I mean, there's great stuff happening right now. It's so exciting to be a part of it, isn't it? It is, it is. Uh, and you know what I love the most? The fact that we can, I don't have to go to New York to purchase a ticket to go see. I can now just go type it in and I can actually see. So I love that. So you have yeah. access all yeah. over the world. So yeah. speaking of New York, have you ever gone back to train or oh, like after? I go to New York sometimes three and four times a year now. Yeah, I've got so many students that are performing up there in companies and on Broadway and and I try to go back and take classes because yeah. I need I need that. I need to be taught. Yeah. <laughs> you know, John. It's yeah. you know, giving, 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 giving. We need to get. Mm -hmm. And I get from going to the Met, the museum, um, and just, you know, just being in the Metropolitan Museum of Art the entire day. And just sitting in front of the Van Gogh and crying my eyes out because it's the most beautiful thing in the world I've seen. So for me, that kind of gives me back that energy, you know, but yeah, I go back to New York. I see family, which mm -hmm. is great. The mm -hmm. thing that is also kind of a little, whatever it is, that when we moved, we lost the ties to close family. Mm -hmm. And I so regret that. So now I can make up for it by calling and seeing my cousins, you know, that right. are some most of them are older than me so I feel it's important to maintain that contact with them uh, are your other family members in the entertainment business as well or is it just you no not at all <laughs> you know my dad used to sing to me but we did have a very famous opera singer on my father's oh. side of the family and it's a hoot because um, at Douglas Anderson School of the Arts where I, I teach now it's a magnet school in North Florida um, that we have dance, we have theater, we have musical theater, we have vocal. So in speaking with the vocal teacher there, I mentioned, well, Leonard Warren is related to me and I used to love to sing when I you know, was singing. And he said, <laughs> and I thought, really, you've heard of him? Because I have only heard stories. And he said, yes, he died of a heart attack on stage at the Met. And I said, that's right. <laughs> May it not happen to anybody I know. But yeah, so Wait, I, mean, I just saw that. Did they just have that on TV? I just, for some okay. reason, yes. And there was, I'm going to get back to you off camera about that, but yeah. I remember seeing something like that. He sang his last song and he passed out over. That was it. And he died. But there, I mean, there oh, might have been another. But there might have been another one. I don't know. It might have okay. been Mario Lanza or somebody. But okay. Leonard Warren was our relative. Oh, <laughs> so when I graduated from high school, Dawn, I don't. I you know there. I have blocked so many things out, and I have forgotten so many things at this point in my life mm -hmm. that there was there was an audition for a, the state play 
which was in St. Augustine, and it was called Cross and Sword. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it was a big to do back then in 1969. Well, lo and behold, with two girlfriends of mine, we went and auditioned and got the job for $55 a week. I was in Fat City. <laughs> so, so for eight weeks, we came to St. Augustine and it was mostly a dance role. We sang a little bit, we acted a lot, but it was mostly a dance role. And I thought, this is kind of cool. You know, it, it was just really kind of cool working with a well-known choreographer from Tampa. He was very well-known in Florida at the time. Um, Frank Ray was his name. And Nilo Toledo, I'll never forget these two men. They really were just marvelous. Nilo was also from Tampa and he was our dance captain. And Nilo did all the conventions at the time. Very tall fellow, beautifully talented, gorgeous dancer. So anyway, after, after that, I thought, wow, it might be kind of cool to go to college and get a dance degree. I don't know why, and that's what I did. And I went to Boston Conservatory, which was the change in my life. Oh, and how um, so? How so? Well, mm -hmm. my, first of all, I met I met people. I could tell you some marvelous stories about these wonderful people that I met. Um, and I just I remember that I somehow got myself on the plane. I mean, thanks to my parents, I guess. Mm -hmm. My trunk had already gotten into the dorm. And when I was getting out at the dorm from the taxi cab driver's car, he said to me, make sure you meet your friends because it's very cold here. Meet your friends at school for the first two months. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm not really here to you know, be right. that social. I really wanna be here to work. Um, but anyway, I took my first class with this woman, Aina Han, who literally, she, she, another, another moment in my life that changed who I was. And I remember Dawn sitting on the floor and we started doing the bounces in Graham. And Ina was in Graham's company and worked with Humphrey. And under her, her tutelage, I learned the entire Graham syllabus of whatever my level was. And it was amazing. I studied with legends up there. Laura Lubavitch, who is still- First generation, people. Lord, first generation, Dawn, oh. honest to God. I mean, I get- goosebumps thinking about working with Ina, people that you, you might not know, because I think their names have kind of been forgotten in history, but people who you might know, Alvin Ailey, that I did not study with him, but oh yeah, I see, oh my God, Don, I have a story I must tell you, okay. and it's because of being at the conservatory, and that man, that man, so for some reason, me as a freshman, this little kid, um, befriended Estelle Spurlock. And Billy, who we called Billy, was a senior in the school. And we were in the same dorm. And I mean, I'm looking at her books. She left me like all her college books. I still have them. You know, the Princeton Horizon books from way back then. <laughs> and, and, and Billy was the most gorgeous thing I have ever seen in my life. She was magnificent. So she said to me one day, um, you know, Alvin Ailey used to come to the school, not when I was there, of course, but prior to my year there. And Billy said, he always said to me, he wants me to audition for his company when I graduate. So sure enough, she's graduating, coming soon. And she said to me, so the company's here in town at John Hancock Hall in Boston. I'm going to audition. You want to go? And I said, huh? Are you kidding me? Is that a question? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> So Billy gets dressed, Dawn, in her leotards and tights with heels, with, I'll never forget her, what she looked like, with a leopard coat, belt, with a hat, with her hair done. I mean, you want to talk, man. <laughs> so we walk into the theater, and what am I? I'm probably wearing my jeans and a big old sweater or something. We walk in the theater, and she goes in before me, opens the doors, and who's on stage warming up? Dudley Williams, yes. Sarah Yarbrough, yes. Judith Jamison, oh. John Parks, you know, uh, Kenny Pearl, all of that wonderful company that was, this, this was 1970. Yes. So that company that was there in the 70s. Yes. And Billy goes, 
Oh, Dudley, it's me, Estelle. <laughs> and I mean, Dudley, our heartthrob, right, of that time. So who is to our left? Alvin Ailey. And this big, wonderful, warm person takes her in his arms and says, go on up, Billy, go take master class and go ahead and we'll do the audition afterwards. I don't remember what else happened that day after he hugged me because I was in such awe. I just wanted to yeah. just look at him. Like when I worked with Merce Cunningham, I just want to look at these people. Am I breathing their same air? Dawn, he took 45 minutes as she warmed up to out of his day to take time to talk to me about dance. I can't remember anything we talked about, but I will never forget that man and that heart of his. Thank you for including that in the interview. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it, it was inspiring. So afterwards, of course, she got in the company. I went back to school as a freshman and studied, studied hard. I worked with Ina. Um, she choreographed some amazing works with um, original music. And uh, Rudy Perez and all these other postmodern type people who used to work with Merce Cunningham were coming in as guest artists. And we did our concert and I didn't know what anorexia was back then, but definitely we all were kind of there because, because, because I don't know why it was just something was happening to everybody. Anyway, after two years, I kind of had enough of the conservatory. I felt I needed to go another direction. I missed musical theater. So I auditioned for Jesus Christ Superstar for the tour and got it and went on the tour for a year. And then um, after that, came back to Florida, missed my, my parents, missed my family, and decided I have nothing. I, I have nothing. I have two years, two or so years at the conservatory. I have credits. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to college. I liked the department at University of South Florida. So I went there. And it was there that another life-changing thing. I mean, God bless my teachers, Dawn. And I have tried to, I have found Ina before she passed away. So I was able to thank her. And my teachers from the USF, I had trouble finding, like Billy. I've been looking for Billy for 25 years. Uh, Donald Byrd, do you know Donald Byrd? I mean, I don't know him, but yes, I know of him. So Donald came to our school and um, he was there for a week during a residency. And I said, I've got to find Billy. Where is she? Because I knew he knew her. Mm -hmm. And he said, nobody can find her. She's in New Jersey. She had a child. She danced with the Ailey Company um, to an Let's extreme. see if we can find that out for you. I'll see if I can. Oh, eagle, oh, oh eagle eye doing. Let's see if I'll find old oh, Billy. Right. Good luck. I, I want to get back to Ina because because yeah. of the history. Can you just give yeah. us an example of what her class uh -huh. consisted of? Like, how did it start? Was it with live music? Um, did she sometimes. count? Yeah, like, sometimes it was. Sometimes she would just. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the, the mouth sounds. Yeah. And I will tell you, Don, that later when I started my first company in Orlando. When I was living in Orlando, I brought her down for a residency and Momentum brought her down also. My friend Karen from the conservatories there. Anyway, they brought her down in Miami. So we got to share her and she, she set water study on them. I'm sorry, Momentum Arts? At Momentum Dance Company. I don't know if they're in still- In Miami, no, I remember. We'll see. Thelma Isles, yeah, and Karen Peterson. Okay, yeah. I've heard of them, yes. Great women. Yeah. So, um, Ina came in and taught a class for us and I videotaped it. So I still have it that I could look at it, which is wonderful. It needs to be here. Oh, <laughs> I wish so that would have been awesome. So her class, her gram class was a gram class, starting with the bounces, going into the spirals. You know, it was a gram class. And the Humphrey class was a Humphrey class, okay. or Limon yeah. class. But Dawn, I wish that they had allowed her to, as I now know, to teach an aesthetics class or a history class, because my God, that woman had so, so much history. Much. Yes. So much history. And Ina was a, an amazing person. She has a book out called Windover because she had this place in Rockport, Massachusetts. It was a it was a dance, a dance place with a barn like like Jacob's Pillow. Yes. And she had things going on in the summertime, which was fabulous, dance camps and 
performances. We need to look that up. Okay, students, look her up. Say the whole name, Aina Han, yeah? How do you spell the last name? H-A-H-N, Aina Han. Okay, guys, look it up. She was okay. great. So, Miss Barrett, so now yes, you have two more years of school. What do you do? I went to USF and okay. I studied with uh, these teachers that I felt like I was home all my life. I felt like I was there. The studios were gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I met so many wonderful people that are still my friends today. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Dawn, it was amazing. Uh, Chase Robinson and Sandra Neal's from the Cunningham Company were there. And Chase was there full time. Sandra would come in in bits and pieces. <clears throat> but to learn the Cunningham technique mm -hmm. after- Can you describe that to the audience, the difference? Let's talk about the grand yeah. technique versus Cunningham because they're totally, one is controlled and the other one is just not. Well, <laughs> it is, but it's- Here's something cool for your students to do. Mm -hmm. um, when we were in COVID and we were all home, so I made, I, I I try to educate myself even more. So on YouTube, the Graham Company and the Cunningham Company have something called Cunning Graham. Ooh. And out of all the years, the 40 or so years that I've been doing these techniques, do you know, Dawn, I never thought of the similarities. And what they did is they were in the studio and they did, they had a woman from the Graham Company and they had Jennifer Goggins from the Cunningham Company. And they had their dancers, their students, some of whom were sitting doing the Graham class, starting with the bounces, and some of them were standing in Cunningham, starting with the bounces. <laughs> yeah. mm. So the similarities were amazing. Now, of course, Merce danced with Martha Graham. So yeah. I never thought that he would develop something that was so similar, but not similar. The right. technique is so... I mean, I, I can't describe it. It's, you know, many people have tried, I think, John, but I don't think they capture it. The Graham, the Graham technique is easier because Graham, of course, students know the technique is based on contraction and release. Mm -hmm. Humphrey is based on the football or walking or ball and rebound. Mm -hmm. Cunningham is not so easy. Cunningham, I mean, if, if you had to talk to him and said, oh, Merce, well, I understand you're, your, your technique is like ballet. You would see these hairs on the back of his neck, just, yeah, you know, with steam coming out of his back ears. Back then, that's a complete insult. Like, oh my God, we're totally, totally different. I know, I'm not that, I, I know, I know. That's really true. So his technique is based around the muscles in the back and the spine and lots of spirals, beautiful control, beautiful long lines. And the juxtaposition of the legs doing one thing as the upper body does another. You know, some students will say, well, I think it maybe might be where the technique is really fast or angular. And I would say something like, well, rethink that because not necessarily, if you look at a piece like Rainforest with all of Andy Warhol's pillows floating around the stage, everything is super slow, almost like a Japanese tea ceremony. So it's very hard after teaching and studying that technique, I still cannot pinpoint it. It's just lovely and controlled. I love the way that he puts tilts and twists together and extensions of legs, it's just beautiful. So let me ask you, so your background you're saying is Graham and Cunningham. And Humphrey. And oh, Humphrey. And Humphrey. Hello, so, yeah. Humphrey. So when you do your choreography, yeah, what do you use most? Like, do you just put them all together? Do you have your own? Like, how does that work? I just come out with my own stuff. You know, okay. um, I was somewhere once, I think a couple of months ago, and somebody said to me, well, you teach Cunningham, but you don't choreograph anything. And I said, well, because it's a wonderful technique to learn. It's so strength building and it's so good for the brain and it's just hard to do, it's so technical. Mm -hmm. But to choreograph like that, you have to be, you have to be Merce. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the farthest thing from I, Mr. Cunningham, you know? Yeah, and I respect that and I, that's, I yeah. honor that. 
That's a lot of, it's honest, seriously, because you take a person's work seriously. And I'm not saying that others don't, but you don't take from someone else. You create your own. Yes, Miss Ellie yeah. Pops Barrett. <laughs> okay, so now you're at UCF, you graduate. Oh, USF, USF. USF, I'm sorry. Anything yes. too, I call it Florida State. Yeah, USF. Yes. <laughs> now that Mr. Parks, is he still there? Was he there? Don was, no, no, no. This was, oh gosh, Don, this was 19... Oh, he was an Ailey Tory. This was early 70s. This was early. Oh, he was dancing his heart out with Mr. Ailey, that lucky person. I love talking to him about it, too, and his wife, Patricia. They're amazing people. I, I don't see them enough. Do you go um, back to the university and teach? Sometimes? No, no. But I have been back there for um, when Florida Dance Association was around. Mm -hmm. when they would have their festivals, I'd go there and make it a point to see John. And I have a lot of students there and send messages to okay. the parks. And my kids are all, they revere him. They're all, it's like me with Merce Cunningham mm -hmm. and Haley. Mm -hmm. Just the mouth open and just staring and can't believe you're in the same space. They can walk in the room, right? Well, that's how I feel about you. It's like you, the way you, your oh. carriage, it's just the way you carry yourself. Oh, so, okay. So now okay. catch us up because I got us off track. So after you graduated, go on. What, what okay, so after I graduated, they asked me to stay and teach. Oh, so I stayed and teach. Really? And that was great. That was, that was cool. I didn't really like it. I didn't think I, I mean, Ina even had me teach, but I never thought I'd be a teacher. I wanted to be a musical theater actress. And here I'm getting waylaid or sidelined with modern dance that is filling this other space in my heart, you know, that is just amazing and cool and I love moving like this. Um, anyway, um, after I finished teaching for them, I was out of work. What am I gonna do? I got some phone calls and I've always been really blessed in life because this always seems to happen to me. Please keep the phone calls coming. <laughs> but, but, um, I got a phone call from a company in Miami um, that was now this is the about this is the early 70s mid 70s called fusion and they were the big modern company in the state and they said we're looking for a dancer choreographer teacher would you consider we heard your blah 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 anyway so I slept down there Dawn I don't even know how I got there I just can't remember and I taught some classes showed them some choreography however that worked back then and I guess I danced for them in class. They watched, I don't know. And they said, well, we like you, but could you please lose six and a half pounds? And I thought, six and a half pounds, why not 10 or why not three? You know, here we go with the weight thing again. Yeah. And I was still sensitive from Boston from getting so sick up there because none of us were eating. I was eating a raisin a day. And I remember saying to a friend, we, I ate a raisin today. We didn't eat, but we were dancing. It was just what it was what it was back then. Okay, wait, let uh, me stop you here. Teaching yeah. form. We have students yes. watching. Yes, keep eating and be healthy. Be healthy. Um, if you have if, if a teacher is watching, what would you say to tell a teacher if they're noticing yes. that their student is either Either way, either overweight and you want to tell them to taper it down or underweight and go up. Aside from like, because it's so sensitive now, like oh, it's one so thing to say generically, eat, because you're not speaking to anyone personally. But what would you say to a teacher who has a one-on-one? -on -one? I would say you have to be very careful, first of all. And I'd also say in the same breath that dance is getting so wonderfully diverse yeah. that we have all kinds of bodies. Thank goodness yes. that that's happening. So I like to think about that, that path and keeping our kids healthy and let them take good care of their bodies and not get injured and eat right. And you know what, Dawn, eventually mm -hmm. they will get healthy or they will just do something else. You know, I mean, you don't have to be thin to dance. It's just don't. not true. You just don't. But to, I, I think that a teacher needs to be very careful today. We cannot bring it up in the public school system at all. That is a big, huge no-no. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the I don't know what you would say to a student in a in a private situation at a studio. Maybe if you know the family, talk to the mom, 
because it is incredibly sensitive and talking to the kid might really throw them for a loop. Sure. You don't know. You just don't know. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Hard subject. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where are we now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Liz, oh, 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 okay. I got more. I've got more. So, Good. Um, so I didn't take the job in Miami. I thought really six and a half pounds. Oh, please. You know, so I got another call from, there used to be a theme park outside of Orlando called Circus World. And I got a call from my friend, Murphy James, who used to be a dance teacher in Kissimmee. And Murphy was wonderful. He did lots of stuff in New York. Anyway, so um, he said, I'm looking for dancers. Are you interested? And I said, you know, it just happens. So it kind of spoke to my musical theater side. And I went to Circus World and got hired. And I'll be darned, they were doing the cutest musical theater, one ring show, like one circus ring. And I got into that, but lo and behold, Urban Feld, who owned Ringling Brothers at the time, Fred Feld yeah. Entertainment, comes with his family and he's changing the show. And he brings in all these Ringling people, Antoinette Cancello, very famous woman who was in the movie, The Greatest Show on Earth, the first woman to ever do a triple on trapeze. So he brings Antoinette in because they're all gonna teach us dancers who love the ground, a tear, how to go up in the air 60 feet and hang from our ankles and whoosh, spin. Okay, well, I wanted a job and it sounded like fun. And I did it for four years, Dawn. And it was a blast. It was a blast. It was a blast. Did they have nets? They had nets, yes? Oh, no, no, ma'am. It's, it's, a, it's a rope that is made of fire hose outside and rubber bands inside. So you climb, we were all in such great shape and you hang from your wrist and you hang from your ankle. Did you Never get mind. insurance? Pardon me? <laughs> insurance? No. Did you, no, no, no hazard pain, nothing. I bet nothing. your mom didn't know you were hanging from the ceiling. She didn't know um, that. Oh my gosh. We had all the big um, acts coming off the show and it was really, it was great. It was great. So what it afforded me though, is being in Orlando, being able to start teaching, which again, just kind of came to me. Um, the people who were over at Valencia wanted to teach some dance classes. So I'm very proud to say that I started the dance department there. You did not. Yes, ma'am, I did. Yeah. And now, Yay, yay to the teachers there that it is a four year program now. Yes. Right? Yeah, which is very exciting. And I was also at a place that was called Church Street Station as a dancer for many, many years. So, I mean, things, you know, it all kind of just did this. I mean, I look at, I look at my life and think I've done some really strange things, but it all kind of is like a building block. It all just kind of fell in place. And anyway, after that, after I left Church Street, I got back into theater, Dawn. Good for you. I, I got back into equity work and did some nice shows and started singing again. And it was wonderful and doing musical theater and teaching modern on the side. Side. And you eventually, uh, wait, before I go there, yeah. Disney. Yeah. Did you ever go to Disney? Were you? At yeah, Disney? I was at Disney. And I don't, because my timeline is off somewhere somehow because I was, a co I was a, an assistant choreographer to Una White, who was the um, woman who did the Oliver film for the opening this day. This wasn't summer. in your resume, guys. She didn't even have that. By the way, her bio is like this long. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. No, so, so I won't forget what I've done. Um, but opening day ceremonies, I, I, along with other people, were brought in as um, assistant choreographers. And I also danced in the opening day ceremony. Oh, thank and you. I can't find footage of that either. So I don't know what happened with that, but- It is good to know, it's good to have it on the record that you were a Disney dancer. I, did, I would have never guessed yeah. that. You know, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was cool to take mom and dad to the soft opening. Sure, we of course. It was cool. Okay, so let's go down to, let's get into your choreography now. Um, okay. Oh wait, before that, did you ever do, Go to LA, do movies, films, anything. Uh, yeah, I did actually, but not out there. <laughs> so, okay, good. Tell us. 
Yeah. Lots. I did, I choreographed Salma Hayek and Jared Leto. The actress? Film, okay. Yeah, in a film that I can't remember the name that they were shooting locally around here and I got a call and they needed a choreographer. So I went and worked with them, which is kind of a weird experience. I don't, I'm, I'm not one to do film. I'm just not. So tell know. the audience how that's different, how choreographing oh, a film yes. is different from the stage. Well, it's, it's, I guess it's, it's still choreography. You're still working with people. You still have to be sensitive to them because you're talking professionals. I mean, big, big professionals here. And um, what I didn't care for, Dawn, was the take and the take and the take. You know, in theater, you get one shot. You know, you do a dance recital, you build up to that and you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse for so many weeks. And then you get however many chances to do your dance. And in film, you just go over and over. And I just find that tedious. I don't, I don't like it. I just don't like it at all. It's Anyway, theater is more exciting because it's is, you love it. You've loved it since you were six years old selling people tickets to your <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. That's adorable. I love that story. Okay, so now you're beginning to blossom into choreography. Yes. Let's go there and let's talk about yeah. you've done over 200 chore musicals. choreography musicals. 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 Yeah. I'm gonna mess that up. Yeah. Um, I'm probably it, over 200 modern pieces too. I mean, I don't know. Document all of this. Like, how do you store all of that? Um, well, as far as the musicals, honest to goodness, I do put most of the stuff down on my resume just so I, I personally know. But um, I've got programs. I don't really document it that much. A lot of things I just do and forget about it and let it go because I think, particularly, Don, when it comes to modern pieces, as you know, those pieces are choreographed for particular groups of dancers. You know, it's not it's not like we go in and preconceive because you never know what you're going to work with. You know, you don't know the level of dancer and you want them to look fabulous. So um, I try and do at least it was impossible years ago, but at least now to get copies of, you know, for DVDs or you, we have our phones or we have, you know, a little video camera, whatever you use. So that's for me, that was good for documentation. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's- You need to get your stuff in the Library of Congress, Congress for dance. Cause I mean, well, to have- I have, I have one thing in there, just one, one, um, a piece that was called the Chayam that was about a 25 minute work that I did in, I can't remember, just years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And it was a Jewish themed, it, I thought it was a lovely piece. It, it was a very diverse cast, which even made it more special. And we talked a lot about what it was about. It was in about, I think, in five or six different sections. Um, and it was with material. And at the very, very end, they created a Jewish star on stage. Um, it, was, it was nice. And I sent that to somebody, and they accepted it. So it's somewhere. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. Very nice. Yeah. I want to share with the audience now um, some um work that you have can you see this i can see that yeah. okay yeah um some of I this, love that picture yeah so let's so this is miss ellie potts barrett right here her website uh mm -hmm. it's right up here elliepottsbarrett.com for any lectures guys if you want to reach out to her or mentorship this is where you would go to reach her Okay, so let's talk about this photo. So where are we here? Yeah. What's happening? So that was, I can't even remember how many years ago that was. Um, those were our advanced dancers at Douglas Anderson School of the Arts, the magnet school I'm at in Jacksonville. And this is our most advanced group of dancers from, um, we call it dance theater. And it was a piece that I did too, if I remember right, a 1940s piece of music Okay. Uh, big band sound and the two dancers, the young man and the girl in front. Mm -hmm. It was like I based it off of marath. That's what it was. Marathon dancing, you know, which they did in the 40s. The people were laying yeah. on each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the whole piece was based on that. And they did a knockout job. They were gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And because of the marathon numbers that the dancers would wear, the technician put numbers that were spinning around on the site. It was very, very nice. interesting. 
So yeah. let me ask you real quick, when you do the choreography, do you envision what the lighting is gonna look like and the costumes, do you do that all? Okay. Always, yeah, not costumes so much as lighting. Um, yeah, boy, there was a piece that I did for our seniors that I've set in other places. It went to the high school dance festival. Oh, nice. Um, and it was based on three spots, nine spots, six spots, with dancers jumping in and out of it. And the technician was so spot on, Dawn, that, that a dancer would jump in, another one would jump out, and then a special would come up on another dancer who was upstage. And it was just a really cool visual thing. Of course, I have no copy of that, but the kids were fantastic. And now we're doing Chorus Line at Douglas Anderson opening in November. Yay. So you did, how did the casting go? What do you look for when you cast oh the casting? Well, I'll tell you that the musical theater students there are very, very good. I think all of our students at that school are very good because, you know, they're all in their arts field and they really concentrate. And it's like a college or a conservatory where they really do focus on their majors. And of course they take their academics in school as well. Um, the casting was really relatively easy. I'm glad to say for this show, the director did it. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so, so I just get, did the choreography and made suggestions, yes. but he, who, he, he is very, very good at casting. And okay, can. and this is going to be open to the public. And where are they located? Where is Douglas Anderson School of the Arts? It's in Jacksonville, Florida. It's off of San Diego Road. It's okay. easy to find. It's a beautiful school. It's a public school. And the show, I think, is going to be really just exciting to see these kids do Yay. this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, then what's this? The making oh, of this? this. So um, during uh, the COVID situation, Mm -hmm. Joanne Mafia, whose name you see down there, created and produced, um, got a grant. She got a very nice grant from, from, I'm not quite sure, so I won't even try to name who it was. And what she wanted to do was hire four choreographers of diversity and have a live dance concert with each of the choreographers, one of whom I am, one of whom are four incredible women, over the age of 50, dancing to her compositions oh. so because of covid we couldn't do a live performance so she said well let's do a documentary <laughs> so we did and it's really good i saw it a couple of weeks ago um we're doing a screening at flagler college in january and dawn i want you to know that she sent a notice out last week saying it was a semi-finalist in the swedish film festival of Bowden. Whatever that is. <laughs> they made us all very happy, but the other choreographers are amazing. I don't know if you know Michelle Otley Fisher, who is in another school in um, a magnet school in Jacksonville, another young lady who used to dance with Trisha Brown, and um, another young lady who is also local, who is more into uh, Thai, uh, not Tibetan, but Asian, beautiful movement. Uh, they're all, it's all diverse and wonderful and different. And I'm proud to be in this league of women over 50. Over 50. And what was your theme? What, what, did, what was your work about? What did you do? My work was about exactly what I told you about as far as the whole Jewish thing coming down. Oh, you to did that again. Okay. Having to deal with anti-Semitism anti and bomb yeah. threats. And um, Jojo really came up with the most beautiful, magnificent music. She's really good. She just got a position at Florida State. Uh, really yeah. Okay. Yeah. And oh, then just, just silly reviews that my dear friend, Carol Lee, who worked, used to work at Hamburger oh. Mary's came up with as um, she had come to see our, I used to be the resident choreographer for the Orlando Philharmonic. And our shows there when we did them were really outstanding with a great cast of excellent, excellent actors from her town. Really great. And so she, she, in I'm my just, head, I'm just going, how did I nail this interview? That's what I'm thinking. Like, oh, oh you're so God. funny. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to hold you too much longer. Okay, so now okay. where are we here? Okay, so this was again at DA, Douglas Anderson. We did You're in Town, the musical which I had just in, done in Seoul, Korea. 
So, yes, I went to Seoul over a period of 10 years and worked over there with theme parks and um, doing choreography for the <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, she, it could be eight pages long. Wow. So anyway, this, this picture is great. The young man who has his arms out is going out on tour with the band visit, the band's visit. His name is Nick Sachs. He's one of my students. If I had a child, he would probably be the son I always wanted. Yeah. He is an incredible talent. And a lot of these kids are working professionally now. This was probably 10 years ago or so. Very nice. Yay. Yeah, they're great. And okay, we have one last one. One Is last one. These kids were um, one of our levels at Douglas Anderson. And um, this was a piece that I did that was a very musical theater based piece. Uh, they were gorgeous. They were really gorgeous. And again, it was a 1940s style piece of music. Yeah. Benny Goodman, I think. They were great. Um, a lot of fun. Oh, that was wonderful. Yay, down memory lane. So guys, check out her website. Um, do you do um, virtual training now? Like if we're- I, I have now that because of COVID, we are all doing that now, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, yeah. Okay, good. So they'll reach out to you there. So before I let you go, we have Florida Dance Masters Organization. Yes. Let's talk about that and how they found you and asked you to create their syllabus for Martin for all the teachers in Florida who are in public schools. Go ahead. Amazing. Um, I, being a Florida person, I've always um, known people who've been part of the organization. I was never a member until they invited me to become a member. Because you know, when you're in um, Dance Masters, whether it's national or regional, you have to take an exam in your field, whether it's ballet, tap, hip hop, uh, character, or modern, and you have to pass the exam. You have to do a physical test, you have to do a written test. And they did not have a test for modern, I guess that they were happy with, or maybe it was just a little too past its prime. So they wanted a new test and they asked me if I would do it. And I really love, you know, I, I love that aspect of dance, whether it be history or the aesthetics part of it. So yeah, I said, okay, I'll do it, sure. <laughs> now yeah. how long did that take and did you pull from Cunningham? Yeah. like how did what is it about is it just your uh, I, technique I, I pulled from everything oh heavens okay. no I pulled from dance history from the basic um, locomotor movements in dance mm -hmm. to dynamics suspension vibratory swinging percussive um, time and rhythm and space mass patterns on the floor techniques, I mean, all of the above. Okay, so, so is this for purchase? What'd you say? I still have a copy of it somewhere. That's on my what I was gonna say, send it over to me. <laughs> I'll cash a, app you. It's a good test. And I think that they were happy with it. And I know they're using it. So I'm really pleased for that. An honor. It's, fair. it's a fair test. So if somebody's really educated and modern, they will ace it. Right. So, yeah, right. but the, what I love about it is the children, the kids are going to get concrete information, injury, hopefully, if they follow this, injury free, because that's the goal. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It. So I have one more question. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> You're still dancing, and let's talk about your adult dance company that I love. <laughs> still moving dance. They are performing at Immerse in downtown Orlando next month. Yes. Um, there are women that I have known, some of whom I've known for 30 years that have been coming to my adult dance class, wherever my adult dance class was. And they are good friends. They are amazing people. I'm proud to be part of these women. I, I still teach them on Tuesday nights. And half of, the, half of the reason I teach them is because I love them so much and just wanna be around them and share in their energy. And besides that, they're really good and they work really hard and they have such love for what they do. Um, uh, there are currently 13 women involved in the company and um, they're great. They're great to choreograph on. So I set a piece on them called Flight with music by David Sanborn. 
and they're going to be performing it at Immerse next month. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. So what is that, Immerse.com? How would people find out um, about Immerse? I'm not, I'm not quite sure, Dawn. It's, okay. um, it's the thing that goes on downtown Creative yes. City. Yes. Uh, it's Cole Nesbitt's thing in Orlando. Mm -hmm. and they just take over downtown and there are yep. thousands of performances. So we're a smidgen, just a tiny little smidgen dancing oh. with other well, people. Well, congratulations. Thank Last you. words for any young student watching um, that wants to decide, do I go straight to a career after dance or do I go and get my education like Aunt Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Barry, go get educated. It makes you so much more marketable. Go get educated, learn everything. Take every single kind of dance class. Take every history class. Take every aesthetics class. Learn how to play the piano. Learn how to read music if you want to choreograph. Learn how to read a score. Just educate, educate, educate. Go to college and they will want you more after college because you have been trained in all these aspects and you're more mature. I don't think, Dawn, people want, maybe ballet is still a different animal or a different world, mm -hmm. but perhaps people just don't want young, young, young dancers right out of high school anymore. I do believe that they want people, people who are a little bit more educated and who- and can bring something. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, that was my last question. I'm going to leave it with you. What are your last words of wisdom that you want to give out to the universe? Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, let me thank you so much for sharing your space for the past hour. I've always admired you, and you are one of my favorite people. And thank heavens that we have you choreographing and dancing and teaching because it's just so important. It's so Aww. important. Never thank stop. You. I think that for anybody who dances, Follow your heart, follow your heart, be true to yourself. Know that if it's something, whatever it is that you want to do, just go and do it. And don't let anybody ever tell you you can't because you can. Let's leave it there. That was brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, the master, because she uh -huh. is the master doctor, I want to <laughs> Ellie Potts Barrett. John, thank, thank you so much. Thank no. you. Applause. Thank you guys for watching 15 Minutes of Fame. And thank you to the sponsors, twinkletoesapparel.com. See you next week. Bye.